Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're gonna do a deep dive into all things area rugs. So listen, area rugs are a frequently asked question from so many of you guys. So I'm hoping I'm gonna cover most of the basics today and I'm gonna give you a couple of secret pro tips at the end. So here's the number one kind of golden rule that you always wanna remember trying to buy an area rug, which is that is that you wanna make sure that there's a four to six inch border around all of the furniture pieces and all of their legs on anything that you're going to place it underneath. How do you figure that out? The easiest way to do that is if you already have your furniture in place, then literally take a tape measure and go from one end of say the sofa all the way to the other, figure that out, add six inches on each side and do the same for the width. All right. And one thing to remember about when you're measuring is that you want to make note of anything that is on the floor that might cause the rug to be a different shape or need to be a different size. Those are things like a raised hearth, bookshelves that project into the room, or even an oddly shaped corner that your seating arrangement accommodates, but your rug may interfere with. Now, if you're doing a new layout or plan and you need to kind of figure something without the furniture pieces there, then what you're gonna need to do is sketch something up. If you go to this video, I show you how to do a little plan that's really easy and quick, and you'll know exactly what size rug to get. So why am I making such a big deal about the size of your rug? What the area rug does is it defines the space, oops, I hit the microphone again, as different from the rest of the floor, right? So if it's in the living room, it's defining the living area away from any traffic patterns, okay? If it's in the master bedroom, for instance, it's defining your sleeping area. There's nothing I hate worse than walking in and seeing a d little rug in front of a bed. What is that for? You don't get off the bed in the front. You get off the bed on the side. And when your feet hit that floor, you want your feet to hit a carpet. So you want that area rug to hold that whole space, bed and nightstands if you have them. So remember that. Now, once you've got your measurements down, you'll notice when you start to shop that most area rugs that are prefabricated are going to be close to similar basic sizes, which would be everything like three by five, four by six, five by eight, six by nine, 10 by 12, 10 by 15, that's kind of a standard. And I will say this, that I'm giving these measurements in feet, for those of you who are in the US, rugs are made all over, right? So those they'll vary a little bit from those dimensions, but those are the general uh, referral sizes when you're looking for an area rug. Most of the questions that have come in have been about living rooms. And so your nine by 12 or your 10 by 14 or your 12 by 15, those are the three big guys that will typically be the size that will fit everything into that space. Now, I know a lot of you all live in an open plan or you have a condition called a great room, and we're gonna go into how you solve that problem at the end. And if this is making sense, give me a like or a comment and share it with someone. So the next thing that you wanna think about with your rug, now that you've got dimensions out of the way, is what's the material that you're going to use. It's completely dependent upon how you're going to use the rug. If you need something that's kind of performance oriented, say you have kids or pets or things like that, you do. Or if it's going into a master bedroom suite and you're only gonna walk on it in your bare feet, then mm, do it in something really delicate and silk and lovely that's soft underneath. So you've got a big range here, but let me just give you an idea of what there is out there. There's two basic categories. There's synthetics and there's natural materials, all right? And the synthetics are everything from like polyesters and nylons and even olefins usually fall into that. Different man-made fibers that they make carpets out of these days. And then there's all your natural fibers, wool and silk, jute and cotton, even rayons, rayons and silks, they tend to fall into that category of being natural even though they've got a little bit of man-made going on with them as well. So there's a huge range to choose from. 
So how do you know what to do? I'll show you. These synthetic fiber products are the real champions if you need an area rug that's a performance one. They even now make rugs that are out of fibers that are specifically stain and wear resistant. They're not quite as soft and luxurious as natural fibers are, but honestly, depending upon their construction, they can still feel pretty good. When you go to natural fibers, wool is honestly the granddaddy of all the natural fibers. And it's one of the better performers in that category in terms of stain resistance. I love wool because it has a softness, it's got a luxury, and depending Depending upon the construction of it, it can feel uber luxurious or it can feel kind of firm underfoot. So it just depends upon how it's made. The fiber is great though. The biggest drawback to wool, honestly, is the price tag because it's really expensive. Honestly, when you're buying a legacy rug or a rug for your forever home, you're gonna really wanna look at the wool option. Cotton is another really common rug fiber. And although it's really soft and it takes dyes really well, it's definitely more delicate than say wool. And it will not perform at all in a high traffic situation. Typically cotton area rugs will be much less expensive than a wool product, but they also tend to be almost disposable. Think of like your kitchen area rugs by your sink or something. Those are great in cotton. Now, I really love these jute, sisal, seagrass, and all the other natural grass woven goods. They're really good performers in terms of wearability. They tend to stain a little bit more, but they're great for high traffic situations because they're relatively low maintenance, they're usually very reasonably priced, and they're easy to clean. So another thing to think about with your rug is how is it constructed? How is it made? And there is a huge range of categories. Everything from flat weaves, low piles, medium piles even. You've got Berbers, which are a loop construction. You've got cut and loop, which is a tuft and a loop construction. You've got carved carpets. You've got wovens, which are often known as Wiltons for you guys in the UK. There's animal hides, which I adore. Um, real or faked, actually. You've got carpet tiles nowadays, which are great. Oops, I hit the microphone again. For super high traffic areas. And you even have shags, which are still tufted products, but they have super long piles. So they have a very specific area that you want to use them for. So the question is on construction, where do you start? And it always comes back to what are you using the carpet for? So in my opinion, the highest performing product out there is actually carpet tiles. These are made of synthetic yarns and they've got really these days they've got lots of fun decorative patterns and they've been cut into squares that can be replaced easily when one gets damaged. I use them all the time for children's playrooms, garages, workspaces. They're great solutions for mud rooms. So I've linked a bunch of things down below so you got to check those out. Now if it's in an entry hall for instance you're going to want something still performance oriented but fairly low pile and you want something that's good with staining and high traffic. So I would probably lean you towards either a flat weave or a low pile construction in a synthetic product. Now, of course, like I talked about before, if it's in your master suite, you can go all the way to the other end. You can go to a very luxurious wool or silk shag, which would be really soft underneath because they don't have to perform the same way and it feels great underfoot. I have a lot of my clients who, this is sort of a controversial subject, who want rugs in their dining rooms underneath their dining tables. But I always provide a synthetic product there because the staining that can occur in a dining room are really significant. The other thing I kind of don't like about rugs in a dining room is that it makes chairs difficult to move back and forth. I will give you this, it helps dampen the sound, so you could go either way, but just remember those points about it if you're gonna do one. So speaking of acoustics, if you have a lovely instrument, like say a grand piano in your space, you definitely wanna make sure you put a, an area rug underneath that piano. I see it often on stone floors or wood floors and it really ruins the acoustics. Acoustics? How do you say that? The acoustics. So make sure you get an area rug underneath a piano. So another thing that's easy to forget because you don't see it is you always want to put a pad under almost every area rug situation. At minimum, it needs to be a non-skid or a slip proof 
uh, mat. Anything that's other than a super deep pile or a shag will definitively need a pad. So now that you know what you're doing, where do you start shopping? There's a lot of online resources. One of my favorites that I go to a lot is rugs.com. I also love Stark, which is spelled S-T-A-R-K. I bought some rugs recently from allmodern.com. There's also a cute little collection at Dash and Albert. There's a lot of options. And don't forget places like Home Depot when you're going for your pad because you just wanna pay Home Depot prices for a pad. Now, one thing to remember too is rugs usually are a fairly significant purchase. If you're going to invest in kind of a legacy rug, you definitely wanna wait until something might be coming on sale. Now, a number of you have asked me about my pro secret, how do we deal with area rugs for large living spaces and or open plan layouts? Because typically those sizes are really big. What I do is I look at suppliers of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and I select a product from there. The reason we go there, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting is fabricated on a huge roll that's typically like 12 or 13 feet in width and it's unending in terms of length. Often people will need things like a 15 by 18. I just spec'd a rug the other day that's 16 by 20. These are big, big area rugs. So they would be exorbitantly expensive if you had them made out of a wool fiber or by a custom company. But if you go to a synthetic product that's being fabricated by uh, a wall-to-wall -wall company, then you're going to be able to keep your price point down a little bit and still get a generously sized area rug. So once you've decided on your total square footage, which is maybe 16 by 20 or whatever that is, you're going to order the roll goods in that size, all right? Then they're going to be able to cut the roll at a distance that will give you that amount and then what happens is you send it to either a local rug fabricator or a lot of times some of the mills will fabricate the rug for you. So big manufacturers like Shaw and Stanton will actually make area rugs for you right at the mill. So you don't even have to look at that third party. But if, if you're looking at one that doesn't, there's always rug makers in, the, in your area because people carpet their stairs and you need a rug maker to make stair runners for carpet. So there's already somebody around. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have them fabricate the actual area rug if they have to stitch a seam into it to make it wider than the 13 foot. That's fine, they'll do it from underneath, it won't show. You can either do it surged if it's a deep pile. You can either do it surged so that you don't see the edge and you just have this lovely deep pile flowing over the edges. Or if it's sort of a flat weave like a sizal would be, then you can add a binding to the edge, which is, you know, a couple inches wide. And it gives you a nice accent strip around the edge of the rug. And it can be an accent color or it can be just a color that blends in. But then that way you have this really lovely custom product that's exactly the size you need it. And usually not for nearly as much as it would be if you had to have something custom made from a area rug manufacturer. Rugs are a huge subject and I've tried to hit most of the basics today. But if you're working on something specific and you've got a question, hit me up at hello at lisaholt.com. And if not, always comment down below. Stay safe, like, share, comment, hit the bell, and I'll see you next week.